good morning, everyone, and thank you to Kobata Secretary to give me this opportunity to share our Belgium experience on demedicalization and decentralization of HIV testing. So my name is Trésor Quadio, and I've been working for six years at Platform Prevention SIDA as project manager. So just to present rapidly my CBO, so we are creating in 2000 and we are working in the French part of Belgium. So it means that we work in Brussels and in Wallonia on HIV and STI prevention. So this means that we receive our funding by the both regions, so by the Brussels, the Brussels government and, for, and also with Wallonia government. And our main activities is around prevention, to the production of prevention campaign, the production of prevention tool, the training session for professional and non-professional staff, the support for people living with HIV, the performing of HIV and STI testing activities. So we perform our testing activities um, in our offices and also in the offices of some partners. And also we have a mobile unit that you can see at the back of the, the screen. And with this mobile unit, unit, we perform testing activities in outreach. So in different places in Brussels and also in Wallonia. And also we do the free distribution of prevention tool as condom, gel, and leaflet also. And we are we take part sometimes in some advocacy work and we target different population, for example, the general population, young people, people living with HIV, migrants, and to do, to communicate on our activity, we have three websites, one website to, 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 to give the information to the general population, another one to specific the communication for migrant community, and the last one for people living with HIV. And in, on the social network, we have two Facebook page and one Instagram profile. So what is the, uh, the, 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 Sorry, I will. the Belgium, Belgium context. So as uh, many, many European countries, we have 2K population, so the MSM uh, in, and migrants, specifically sub-African migrants. And on the political level, we have three political levels. So the federal, for, federal government for all in link with the payment of the treatment, for example, if we are in the area of the HIV and the regional and the community uh, government to all about prevention activities. So you must take these competencies in consideration when you want to address an advocacy for politics. So for example, if you want to advocate for more funding for testing activity, for example, you must address it for the regional or community government because it is the competence, not the federal competence. So this sometimes make the process difficult because you must, you must to manage with different level of politics in, in terms of the topic you want to advocate your your work and we are also different prevention actor on the field we do not approach by target group for example if you take a cbo uh, like execo they work with msm people alias for male sex 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 worker and trans people and they pass pay for female sex worker for example and these actors are brought together in the consultation group names, uh, Comité de Pilotage et d'Appui Méthodologique, uh, in abbreviation CEPAM. So this CEPAM, uh, the role of this CEPAM is to coordinate all advocacy um, work in HIV and STI prevention sector and also to update of um, the strategy concerté, which is an HIV operational plan for HIV actors in Belgium. So if you want to have more detail on this uh, HIV operation plan, you can see it on the website. So what is the HIV testing context before 2018? So, HIV testing is registered by a legal framework in Belgium, so by a royal decree, and um, just only 
HIV testing strategy uh, available uh, uh, at this period. So the testing can be performed by only by the medical professional. But we know that this strategy presents many barriers as an uh, individual barrier, for example, the, the problem of confidentiality, the administrative status, specifically for the illegal migrant, for example, the lack of information on HIV for the different specific group, the fee of the judgment, for example, the financial problem to pay the testing, for example, the, pro the, the language barrier, and also the lack of information on the healthcare system in general. And also, we have some structural barriers, for example, the missing opportunity by medical professionals, the problem of discrimination and stigmatization, the language barrier also, the problem of the opening hour of HIV testing center. For example, in Brussels, we are, we are, you are two specific, specific clinics where you can perform a HIV test, but the problem is these centers are not open all the day at all time. So there are some specific day and some specific hour to open. So this represents a problem um, for someone. If you want to perform a test, but you are not available during the open hours of this center, for example. The problem also of the appointment delay for a testing, if you want to make a, a testing, for example, with your GP, but you must call your GP and take an appointment, for example. And the problem of the few expertise to address sexual issues by medical staff, and et cetera, et cetera. So why uh, do a, a, a in advocacy for decentralization and the medicalization of HIV testing in the Belgium context. So as I mentioned before in the, the slide, we have many barriers and many limitations of the medical testing strategy. We recognize the expertise of CBVCT CB, CB in the knowledge of the different key population in the, the prevention work, for example, the, in the campaign, in the outreach work, in the support and the training activities also. We know also the, the power and the activism of CBVO and the coordination of CBVCT CB, CB, CB and also the evolution of prevention tool including testing strategy and also the recommendation of international guidelines as uh, Oksana present in the, in the slide. We know also the efficacy of HIV rapid tests on the market and also the relevance of the medicalized and decentralized screen, screening to reach certain population. And we can see it in AMA's study, for example, and also the feedback of some good experiences in other country, for example, in France, where they are beginning the HIV rapid test in 2012, for example. And one main thing is the fact that uh, during the period between 2010 and 2014 in Belgium, the political agenda was favorable to HIV prevention. So this give us the opportunities to advocate for a decentralized and, and a decentralization of the HIV testing in Belgium. And here, for example, to give you an example of manifestation for the CBV city here, it was a manifestation in front of the building of national institutes for um, health insurance, for example, to play to advocate to obtain the, the medicalized and the decentralization of HIV testing. So how the, the evolution of this royal decree? So in October 2013, Belgium um, has for the first time approved a HIV national plan based on four pillars. The first pillar is in link with prevention. The second pillar for testing and access to healthcare. The third on management of people living with HIV. And the last one is the quality of life of people living with HIV. So this plan was declined in 58 different action. And this plan was advised by a monitoring committee. So the one of the role of this monitoring committee is to do the monitoring, uh, the implementation of the action list in the plan 
and to be the intermediate between the field and the politics in length in the implementation of HIV activities. So in this committee, you have the representative of CBVCT, so for the prevention pillar, the HIV reference center and the HIV laboratory center for the testing and FK pillar, and also for the quality uh, of life pillar, we have some represent of people living with HIV. And also we have uh, the representative of Sciansano, which are our National Institute of Public Health. And on this picture, we can see on the left, our Ministry of Health in this period uh, um, display a good role uh, in this uh, first HIV plan. So in this first plan, uh, HIV plan, the Action 37 advocate to develop a national HIV testing strategy in terms with existing regulation and propose some activities as the combine of different testing model, including testing by professional, by also testing by non-professional after a training. The combine of different points of testing, including decentralized testing program, and as you can see also, uh, um, this plan was in favor of the medicalized and decentralized of HIV testing and the, prom the promotion uh, to advocate for a legal framework which authorize this kind of testing strategy. So um, already in this first HIV plan, we have some um, piece of activity to play a role to advocate to demedicalize and to decentralize HIV testing and give in the, some way. So after the, the, pro, the, the promotion of this first HIV plan in 2014 also, uh, we have the opinion of the Belgian Medical Council, which published also a favorable opinion about the proposition of, an HIV, of HIV plan in terms of testing, but also in favor of a legal framework to regulate this practice. So they are okay to, for the demedicalization the and the decentralization of HIV testing, but they, they, they say we, we need a legal framework to regulate this practice. So after the publication of the plan in 2013, the Ministry of Health asked also to the Health Superior Council an opinion about these strategies to demedicalize and to decentralize the HIV testing. So um, two years after the promotion of this first HIV plan in 2015, this council published their opinion with some recommendation. So in their recommendation, they give, uh, a, in terms of the training of the non-professional staff who could be involved in this testing strategy and other, some list of topic which must include in the training. For example, we can see on the point two, the H, give some information, some training about HIV in infection, about the orientation test for HIV, about data recording, about the hygiene and safety requirement when conducting orientation tests and some and also with other topics. So in practice, who are involved in this training? So there are a close collaboration between HRC. So the HRC is the HIV Reference Center in Belgium, the HIV Reference Laboratory, and also with CBVCT. So during this training, all the medical aspect is the part of HIC and the, lab, the HIV reference laboratory. And for the other aspect, including, for example, the counseling, the data management of, and for example, the, prevent, the presentation of the COBA test tool, for example, in this training, and also the presentation of the, the different characteristics, the specificity of the key population, this part is managed by the CBBCT. So during the two, this training take two days. Um, we have uh, a mix of theoretical of, uh, component and also maybe a practical activities during these two days of the training. And after the training, the person receive a certificate which are delivered for three years. So after three years, the person must renew 
the certificate to continue to perform HIV testing in the association. So finally, uh, and after the, 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 the proposition of the Health Superior Council, also in 2016, we, the, we received, uh, after the notice of the Health Superior Council in 2016, the federal parliament adopted also a resolution in favor of the demedicalization and the decentralization for HIV testing for vulnerable target group. And finally, in 2018, we received officially the modification of the Royal Decree on HIV testing. And on this uh, um, slide, we can see uh, a print of the Royal Decree and you can see it's seen by the Belgium Royal the Roi Philippe. So, and here we can see some example of device you use in Belgium to perform our HIV rapid test. So it's the rapid test that take a drop of blood to do the test. So to resume, we can see the process has started before 2013 and all this advocacy work um, opened on 2013 on the launch of the first HIV uh, Belgian plan. And in, after the launch of this first Belgian HIV plan in 2014, we received a favorable notice of the Medical Council and also the Ministry of Health asked a request of, uh, to Health Superior Council to obtain some recommendation to have a legal framework to give the, the authorization to non-professional to perform HIV testing. So after uh, one year after, we received also this notice of Health Superior Council to answer to the ministry request. And after the resolution of the federal parliament and to finish in 2018, the modification of the Royal Decree, we make possible the decentralized and the demedicalized HIV testing with rapid tests performed by non-medical staff, but after following a training. So, what is the next step in 2023? So um, we cross the we are after the we are received this modification of the Royal Decree to obtain the, the authorization to do the HIV testing in CBBCT by non-professional. At this step in this Royal Decree, only HIV test was possible. So we are continuing to advocate to open the testing for over STI. So normally we cross the, the, the finger maybe after the end of this year, we will obtain a new modification of the first royal decree, including the, the authorization to perform the hepatitis and syphilis tests by non-professional staff in CBBCT. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>